testing, testing. Okay. 好，誒，大家早晨。Good morning, everyone. 誒，我同大家分享一個。Today, I would like to share with you a project that I've developed for three to four years. I call it the OL project. It is an user-oriented, lightweight microcloud infrastructure. It was originally designed for the Raspberry Pi, and then later expanded to be usable on other architectures as well. Let me start by a question to everyone: What do you think is a cloud system? If you go on to Reddit a lot, you know that the cloud is someone else's computer. Well, this is to some extent true, because most of the cloud infrastructure we use is on the virtual machine or something set up on a web server. And because we usually need some network connections, it could be complicated to use. So the story I would like to share with you today is how I developed a system Aim to let non-professionals to use the cloud infrastructure. Let me also introduce something about myself. I'm from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University in my fourth year of study in the Department of Computing. I usually write in PHP plus JavaScript, and in recent years, I also write something in GoLang. And because I know something both about the backend and front end, I call myself a full stack developer. And with this project. I won the fifth Hong Kong University Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship Competition. And when I started this project, many people asked me, "What's the difference with a NAS? That's the network as a storage, such as the Synology and QLab systems." I think that a special feature about OLO is that it is a lightweight infrastructure. That does not depend on specific operating system. For example, the Synology DSM depends on specific hardware. FreeNAS and OMV systems depend on some operating systems to build on. OLO is more like Sandstorm. It is based on many modules combined together. Usually, when I talk to experts about cloud infrastructure, the first things that come to their mind would be OpenStack, Apache Cloud Stacks, etc. These infrastructures are usually built on a host infrastructure, where we will construct a virtualized machine layer and build another operating system on it. For OAO, it does not require a virtualized layer. Instead, it builds an API layer on each of the OS, and it goes to the web browser and builds a common application platform where other applications will be built on it. In simple words, OAO is a cloud operating system that's built with web standards. Since it's an OS, you can of course use it as a NAS to put files. So, where does the OAO project come from? In 2014, for my own convenience, I built with PHP and JavaScript a website for audio and video streaming, where I can do some playback. Later on, I went on to the university, and I joined some web programming courses. Then I started to write more advanced PHP and JavaScript. I was thinking, what if I could use this system to do some editing on the browser, access media in the server, and also upload some notes back home? But these modules are quite discreet. How can I connect them? I will need a file manager like the Windows File Explorer and also a unified login system. So. In the beginning of 2016, I developed the first, most fundamental part of OAO. It is a centralized login system using PHP session. I developed a PHP-based file explorer. So when we double-click a file, it will use corresponding modules to open that file. The logics are simple. The infrastructure is also very simple. It is an authentication system, above which there is the AOAuth, which is LS Auth and OAuth, and I believe all of you know what OAuth is. And above that, we have the web apps modules. Then, how did the OAO project come from? When we've used this system for a while, 
We wanted to add more and more features to it. For example, some friends may want some functions, then I added it as a module, so it becomes a modular design development. And say, it is quite troublesome to switch between tabs if we are doing programming and want to change the songs. So I made it in a web desktop mode. And in 2018, there are more of the IoT protocols, and there are the protocols needed to scale, such as the cluster and the FS protocols. With these four major components, I created the OAO. Now I'm showing you the OAO system that I'm using daily. You can use web browsers such as Chrome and Firefox to open this desktop environment to access the files from home. On the left of this screen are some application icons. And on the right, here are some files and folders. The infrastructure has also become more complex. You can see on the left, here are some originally existing modules. And I've also added some system modules, such as for file system bridging, host monitoring tools, upload interface, and also some frameworks to allow the modules to utilize them to connect to APIs at the base levels of the system. In 2020, where the latest version was released in March, there are two major developers. The first one is, of course, myself, and the second one is my friend who has migrated to the US. And now, let's move on to the major parts of today's presentation. I'll first introduce briefly about the features of OAO and perform a demonstration to show how it works. Secondly, I will show you how to install the OAO system on a Raspberry Pi. Thirdly, I'll talk about how does the File Explorer framework work. And finally, I'll discuss in a simple manner the principles of cluster and IoT controllers. Let me start the demo. When we log into the system, there's not much difference from common web portals. You can then click Activate Virtual Desktop to enter this web interface, which is very similar to the operating system you are using daily. You can add new files, new folders. You can also perform some very basic file operations, such as copy and paste. So on the surface, it looks very similar to Windows and Linux. But the infrastructure is totally different. Of course, as a web desktop, this system allows many of the customization options. You can also check the host information to see what are you running on. In this example, it's a Raspberry Pi. Next, here are some tools. For example, this is the FFMPEG. We are trying to make the different modules in this system graphical. If you don't know what is FFMPEG, it is a universal file conversion tool such as to convert music and image file formats. There are also some Markdown text editor for document editing integrated in the system where you can use them in an intuitive manner without needing to handle the cloud infrastructure. We also have some simple IDEs, text editors, and setting panels. So when you use the system, if you feel like any operating system you are using, which is very convenient. If you're interested, you can view it via the YouTube link. The installation method of OAO is also very simple. How can we install it? Firstly, we install a Raspberry Buster on the Raspberry Pi, and we use the app apt to install the Apache and PHP, and also the Git, and the Git clone the repository that we can install the system. You will next see a graphical user interface that you can just follow the instructions. Next, I'll talk about something more complex and more technical. Although OAO has a web desktop interface, it is perfectly okay not to use the interface. 
Because its core part is the file explorer system, as in how to use the file explorer to connect different modules of the system. Both are some functional keys, and there are some folders where there are some hot keys in it. This file explorer is not that easy to write. If you look up on the GitHub for some open source PHP file doers, usually the structure is like this. There's a single PHP file to control all the file I.O. requests and also the UI rendering, that is the HTML generation. However, there's a problem with this design. When you handle a very large file such as several gigabytes, it will block other requests in Apache. If you request another PHP in Apache at the same time, it will be blocked. Therefore, later I used Olang to develop another module. It's called FSExec, which can be found in the source below. How does this module work? This client, which is a browser or a JavaScript HS request, will be passed to the Apache server, which will execute a bash script, BMD script, or bash script depending on your platform. It will execute via the kernel some golden binaries, which will replace the PHP to do some file operation. The two ways do ask, if we directly run the processes, we will still block the PHP. So, we added a call and detach feature in the PHP. You can see here, here's a p-open-p-close logical method. It can detach a just created process to make it often. This orphaned process will continue to handle the file operation until it finishes. Of course, if you need to copy a few files together or operate on some large files, it's still perfectly fine. We won't update the interface for the file listener. We use another web worker to ask the PHP server to get the file on hash in the background. There's no need to update if the file hash is the same, but we'll update if it's different. We moved the log and monitoring system to an iframe. So if we do a copy and paste operation, a dialog will pop up. This dialog is used to eliminate the problem of I.O. bottleneck in other PHP file viewers. Later, because OAO was working on Raspberry Pi, which has a limited ability for scaling up, so we used a clustering approach for scaling. It means to combine a few Raspberry Pi together to handle some large files simultaneously or store them. You probably knew if you've tried the OpenStack before that it's very troublesome to set up the networking, and if you are setting up DHCP in the VM, you won't want to read the troubleshooting guide. So, in the design of OAO, there's a circuit called Trusted Scanning, which scans for nearby OAO systems. If it detects it, it will log the IP, GUID, and other information on the table. When other applications need to do some parallel processing, it will find out the corresponding IP address and send the service request to the other device. An example of application is the Iris DFS. It is another quasi-proof binary written in Golang. It uses a method similar to GFS to do some file chunking to store different parts of files in different devices. So even if a copy files on a device, the other device still have some copies of the file. When we do an uploading, we first get the IPv4 address from the user ID before we distribute to the cluster. Another example is a home dynamic, which is developed to control devices based on some specific protocols. 
But it's open source on GitHub, so you can have a look. In simple words, it can control most IoT devices built on Arduino or uses firmware with Sonoff and Tasmola. When you launch the system, it will detach for nearby IoT devices and list them on a table. And when the user sends some requests such as to turn on and off the light, it will try to get the user ID and subsequently the IP to do some communication in restful manner. If you go into the user settings in the OAO, you can see a lot of user IDs which will be used to map for the last seen IP addresses. So, so much I've said, what's the use of OAO and what's the fun part of it? At first, I implemented it on Pi0. At that time, Pi0 W was newly released, which contains a built-in WLAN card, and I added an additional one to use it in a, an access port mode, so I can access the files within the device whenever I go. Later on, when this device could no longer satisfy my need, I move on to the NAS project. This project has been shared as open source on Instructable. If you're interested, please feel free to have a look. I am also working with two other developers to develop a number of things such as 3D printing controller, video streaming services, and these modules will be added to the platform. There are some other interesting things I would like to mention. Because recently, I'm playing with Azure more. So you can now upload app services on Azure to OAO. You can even upload some exe file OAO to measure the VM system information. Furthermore, although the OAO was designed for a Raspberry Pi or a Debian cluster, you can also use WAMP or XAMP to deploy it on Windows. Although there will be some limitations to deploy it on Windows, something interesting is that the interface will automatically change to a Windows style as you deploy it on Windows. Like here, when you deploy it on Windows and you use the My Choice app, you see a disk mountain on Windows. And in May of this year, we are leaving beta to enter the official version. And we are releasing the preview version of version 1. So if you're interested, please take a look. Here are the links to source code of what I shared today. And if you're interested, you can also go to GitHub for content and code via this QR code. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, for your full speech. I believe we have all learned a lot.